Good morning. Dr. Terrell, are you on mute? Because I can't hear you. Oh, good. I thought it was just me. <laughs> I, was about, I was checking my settings. It says you're um, unmuted, Dr. Terrell. Is this better? Oh, good. Ah, Jeez. Ah, so many. We're back. We're back. I, you know, I got here at like 6.30, and I've been farting with this equipment for an hour, and I haven't even had a chance to prepare for lecture. I was like, uh. We can take like, like a 15-minute break, honestly, if you need to prepare. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Okay. I will do it on the fly. Experience will reign. So, what is the Frank Condon principle? Uh, and so, uh, I plan on spending at least 25 minutes, maybe half an hour, uh, discussing the Frank Condon principle with y'all. But you only need to know it at a very basic level. And the very basic level that I need you to know it at is, is all right here. And it is that um, uh, the, it has to do with the energies of the emission and the absorption spectrum, right? And that is that um, the emission spectrum comes at lower energy than the absorption spectrum, right? Um, if you um, if you look at uh, this spectrum, for example, you see on the left the black is the absorption, and that uh, you know starts in the four hundreds, ends in the five hundreds, right? And the emissions spectrum starts in the five hundreds, 
ends in the six or seven hundreds, right? So there's at least a, I don't know, let's say a hundred nanometer uh, red shift in the emission spectrum. And there's a couple ways to interpret that, right? One is the, um, uh, based on the energy levels of the absorption and the um, emission, basically. So let me, um, let me switch to dot cam here. Now here's one I've got to learn, is how to switch quickly from screens. So uh, for example, if you have, um, a lower state and an upper state. And this is V equals zero, one and two, or this is, you know, more specifically, this is V prime. This is V double prime. I think I got the primes right. I could have them wrong, sorry. But the majority of molecules at room temperature are in the uh, lower vibrational of the lower electronic state. So the interaction with photons start here. That is that uh, most atoms and molecules are in this state at any given uh, point in time. Therefore, photons that come in are most likely to interact with those molecules, right? So the upgoing interactions are like this, right? Excuse me. And um, the uh, then for the uh, downward going transitions, right? They all begin here, uh, but for a different reason. And that that different reason is that the uh, non radiative decay is very fast. And specifically, it's faster than the radiative decay that happens um, here, right? So now uh, moving from red to blue, we'll get these three transitions, right? And so this is uh, one electronic energy plus zero, one, and two vibrational energy quanta. And this is one electronic minus zero, one, and two uh, vibrational quanta, right? So that's one way to look at it. And this is correct. There's also a, an aspect of this that's important for understanding um, the intensity of the bands and also and also the energetics. But, uh, and this has to do uh, mainly with solvation, right? So um, when you have an absorbing molecule, uh, let's say you have um, a cyanide, right? C and just a Make a simple molecule, right? But one that has a fairly substantial dipole moment. Um, and I'm embarrassed because I'm not even sure which, which end is positive and which is negative. Um, but let's use a physics dipole that goes from negative to positive here. 
You guys see that? And um, let's uh, let's just assume that this uh, molecule can absorb light into a, a, a CN star state. And that the dipole moment is reversed in the CN star state. Right? Now, if this happens, uh, so this is, so the, the absorption is uh, an instantaneous process. Um, the, uh, you know, uh, the photon comes along, it interacts with the molecule, and at that moment, either the molecule is ready or it's not ready. So um, it's like um, the, the, the photon, uh, it, can't, it can't do work on the environment. It can't do work on any of the other molecules. It can only, it can only work on the electronic state of the, of the molecule in question, electronic vibrational and rotational state of the molecule in question, right? So, so what will happen is that CN, if it's in water, let's, let's say that it is, um, uh, we have our CN, this side is positive, and so there's going to be, on average, some uh, water dipoles oriented towards this positively tar charged carbon, and then some hydrogen di uh, dipoles oriented towards the nitrogen, right? Then when this absorbs a photon, it's gonna um, reverse the solvation, and this will make um, well, I mean, it's actually not going to reverse. I'm sorry, I totally misspoke. I completely misled you there. It's not going to reverse the solvation. That's the whole point. <laughs> it will absorb the photon, and it will reverse the dipole moment on the molecule, right? This, this dipole moment is going like this, right? But it will not reverse the solvation because that takes time. Right? It'll reverse the dipole moment, but not the solvation. So now we have a we have this confused high energy state here. I can't see what you're drawing anymore. Oh, you can't? Oh whoa. Oh sorry. Let me let me try to get this share back. Glad to see. Oh, it's yeah, something to say. So it's like, okay, is anyone else seeing or not seeing this? Okay, let me let me get it back. Let me get it back here. There, better, oh. now, right? There we go. Okay. Lots of stuff. Okay. Okay. So, so this is, you know, it's sort of repetitious, but um, this and this structure are the same except for the direction of this dipole moment arrow, right? And so now this, this has the negative charge here and the positive charge here, whereas this has the positive charge here and the negative charge here. And then, you know, in, you know, 10 femtoseconds or less, 
these guys that will rearrange. Oh, this is the this is the excited um, electronic state. Okay. Then the then the solvent molecules will rearrange, right? Then you'll have the excited electronic state. This and it will have the oxygens. And this guy will have the hydrogens. Right, and this is still going to be the star state, right? And then uh, in about one nanosecond, you will have C N ground state plus a photon and the the energetics are going to be backwards for this one. Right? The the um, dipole moment will be back this way, but the energetics are going to be messed up again. And then in 10 femtoseconds, or less, then the solvent will rearrange, and you will get <laughs> ground state uh, cyanide with the proper uh, orientation. Oops, of dipoles around it. So let's do a little bit of shorthand here. I mean, this is probably pretty confusing, actually. You know, there's a lot of like little sticks and arrows and blah blah blah, right? It's probably pretty like, I mean, you you, you might get it, and it's like, oh, duh, you know. But most likely, it's like, what the bleep is that guy trying to say? What, you know? So I'm gonna I'm gonna work on this a little bit, right? There's one way of putting it, right? Now now let's let's continue working on this. Let's let's make some shorthand. Let's say that if you have a dipole moment here, right? Where this is the plus end and this is the minus end, and then you then you have the solvent molecules with the minus end towards the plus and the plus end 
towards the minus, right? Let's, let's make a shorthand for this. And we're gonna call this, um, we'll do this, right? There's the molecule. And then um, here's the solvent. I mean, to make a little, little fat arrow like this, right? If my pen cooperates. And then in this guy, they're gonna be facing away, right? Does that look right to y'all? So this is like, this is a molecule. And this is solvent. So now I'm going to, I'm going to, um, uh, Now I'll simplify this down just a little bit more. And, and, and we're gonna, I'll do it like this. I'll do, there's a molecule. And then there's, um, I'm just gonna write one solvent molecule here. And one solvent molecule here. You guys are gonna understand that we're talking about an, an averaging array of solvent molecules there. Is that okay, Jean-Luca? Yeah. Yes? Yes, yeah, I was muted for a second, yeah. <laughs> Good. Excellent. I have a runny nose. I don't know why. It sucks. Okay. So now, um, now what we're going to do, now we'll take this, this diagram here and we'll cycle it through photon absorption, right? So there's, um, there's an instantaneous photon absorption, right? After that process, then we have this guy, this guy, and this guy. Now let, let's talk about, um, let's say that, uh, U solvation is, let's say it's negative one, whatever unit we're using. Then, and U, U here is internal energy. Okay. Now, what is the internal the internal solvation energy of this state here? Well, I don't know exactly for sure, but I have a strong feeling that if this is negative one, then this will be positive one. Right? Because now we, what we've essentially done is we've taken this dipole moment and we've rotated it around in space. 
know, and I'm assuming it's the same magnitude. It might not be exactly the same, but it's very common when, when a molecule absorbs a photon for its um, dipole moment to reverse. And uh, that's because um, uh, the, uh, well, I don't know why it is, but it happens. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> the electronics definitely change. Dipole moments definitely change. And, I, and there are definitely cases where they reverse. Let's put it that way. So, um, so now at the instant the light is absorbed, the uh, molecular dipole reverses, but the solvent, uh, let me see here. Um, let's, let's do a little test here. Molecular dipole and solvent dipoles. And the answer here is either going to be uh, the answer here is either going to be R for reverses or oops or NC for a no change. So upon absorption of the photon, does the molecular dipole change or not? That's a, that's a question for the class. And do the solvent dipole moments change or not? The molecular dipoles reverse, the solvents do not. Yeah. Dan? I'll second, I'll second it. You're going to second that? Yeah? Solomon? Are you going to third that? You better third it, Solomon. Solomon! Solomon! Solomon died. Oh my God! The unmute button. <laughs> that's that. That's got to be it. He's not having breakfast. Nor is Van. I know Van is probably not having breakfast because she gets on like an hour early. Right, Van? Yes. <laughs> yes. I knew you were there. <laughs> you know what we're talking about. You have any idea? <laughs> okay, all right, all right. So I'm gonna be talking henceforth to Cindy, Nicholas, and whoever else understands. If you don't understand, you just watch it like a sitcom and laugh at the funny bits. <laughs> and then come to office hours. Then come to office hours, which you're not going to come to office hours because nobody comes to office hours for some reason. I'm going to have coffee too. I had to get up early, so I'm having my coffee in a, in a Starbucks cup. Starbucks venti coffee with cream and chocolate. Kind oh, of, you have me at chocolate. Okay. Yeah, it's actually not the greatest thing. It's a it comes out a little bit bitter. Anyway. So the molecular dipole reverses. The solvent dipoles undergo no change. This is absorption, right? In this, in this, in this instant, what we have described is absorption. Right? 
Now, the next inform instant, what's going to happen is will be described as relaxation. Right? So what's going to happen next? The so this is the star, I'm sorry, this is the star state up here, right? This is say ground state cyanide, this is excited state cyanide. Now we're still going to have excited state cyanide because from the molecules perspective, it went through all the trouble to interact with the photon. And as a matter of fact, it ate the photon. It just like, wow, and ate the photon. And it's all, right? It's like feeding a balloon to a garter snake. It's going to be all blonk in the middle, right? Yeah, I see you get that, Casey. Oh, poor snake. It's yeah. disturbing. Well, you got to make points here, right? <laughs> so, so here's your fat garter snake, right? But what happens to the solvent molecules now? What's, what am I going to do to these two guys right here? The reverse. They will reverse, exactly. So now they're going to go, wait a minute. I'm going to change back, right? Now, so now we're going to go. Uh, 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 uh. So, um, okay. Ah. Oh, I see. And actually, I've neglected to say that the internal energy, uh, there's a solvation part, there's electronic part, right? And then there's, um, let's say, U electronic is zero, and U electronic is uh, plus 10, right? Now, what we're going to say is um, uh, now the U electronic is still going to be plus 10, but the U solvation will be what? That back to our minus one. Now that everything's going in the same direction again. What do you think, Casey? It's gonna say twenty, but Cindy sounds more bright. Ah! Where'd you get twenty? I okay, don't so know. salvation goes from minus one to plus one when you flip these arrows, right? And an electronic goes from zero to 10 when you flip this arrow, right? This arrow didn't change. These little guys did change. Therefore, the solvation energy goes down by how many units? Gianluca. Uh, I'm kind of lost. I'm Ah, oh, come on, man. You can't be lost. You can't be lost. Look, you got one, two, three. They're all to the right. This is minus one and zero. Now you've got one, two, three. This is unfavorable, unfavorable, and unfavorable. So you got plus one, plus 10. Now you've got favorable, unfavorable, favorable. So you've got plus 10 and... Is it zero? That's a good choice, but it's wrong. <laughs> oh my God. You know it's not zero. You know it's not 20. Right? So when, when you flip 
see, this is like, this is like a, think of this like an electromagnet, right? And these are little magnet, little permanent magnets on the end, let's see, right? Now, when you turn the power on, you reverse the polarity in the big electromagnet, right? But then these guys, they're like, what the bleep? I just circled around to get to this orientation and now you flip the field on me, right? So this field is unfavorable here. And then, It says, okay, well, I'm gonna relax, then I'm gonna I'm gonna flip back, but boom. Negative one. Negative one. Who said that? Casey? Excellent. Excellent. So you've got minus one plus eleven plus nine, right? And then what happens next? in this four step process, right? Then we get um, uh, the, the electronic state relaxes back down, right? Then we go boom like this, but these guys are stuck in the wrong orientation, right? And now we've got U electronic is zero and U solvation is equal to who can tell me ex besides Cindy and Casey? Gag order. Plus one. Oh, and wait, wait, Nicholas, Nicholas, you're gag too. No, Nicholas. Too oh, too late. Ah! Nobody heard you, though. <laughs> I never got out of the second grade emotionally, so you got to put up with me. Probably never got out of kindergarten. As I get older, I get, like, behaviorally more and more retarded. So you just have to put up with me. Basically, you know, I don't know how, but I got tenure. So they're kind of stuck with me, as are you guys. So Gianluca, Dylan, Mina, Casey, Solomon, Page, and Van. It is up to you to tell me what the salvation energy is now in this state. Is it plus one? Who said that? Gianluca? No, wait. Who said that? Mina? <laughs> Mina. I know you. You you do research with Dr. Volker, right? Um, is it? Is that yes Dr. or no? Grazioli? No. Oh, Dr. Grazioli. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Is he keeping you guys busy? Yes. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, all right. That's good. I mean, I just wonder what you guys do. You got to work <laughs> on your computers all the time, you know? It's like so much learning to get to dig into the problems. I admire. Yeah, sure. I admire. I admire John, John Mark for doing that. Okay. So, yes, the salvation energy now will be plus one. And you should know this, Mina, right? Because this is classic. You know, you know, you know what it is, you know, thermodynamic or something like that. So now, so this is, um, this is an emission, right? And then the next thing that happens is uh, what? <clears throat> I'll draw this part and we're gonna call this relax. Uh, relax again. Oh, you guys can't see it. Okay, I'm going to move this up a little bit.
I'm gonna refocus, focus, focus. There we go. Now it's gonna relax again, right? And what uh, what is the um, what am I gonna draw here? What about the solvation? They're back in the ground state confirmation. Why, yes, they are. Excellent. And ah, but what is the ground state confirmation? They flip Which, the other way. Uh, ah, yeah. Exactly, exactly right. I'm not going to beat that horse. Right. So now this guy here, uh, U electronic is zero and U solvation is Oh my God, John Luke disappeared. Oh my God, I embarrassed him. I hate that. Come back. Look. Okay. So use the force. Okay. So um U salvation now equals what? Uh anybody but Cindy, Casey, Mina, or Nicholas. That means Dylan. Negative one. Very good. Very good, man. Excellent. Minus one. Exactly. You know, it's just this this interaction is plus one, this interaction is minus one. Right? So um so here this is a photonic event. This is a photonic event. It absorbs, relaxes, emits, and relaxes, right? So you can see that in one of two ways, right? You can see that either just like this, or you can see it like this, right? Absorb, relax, emit, and relax. Now, the thing is that there's two components to the relaxation, right? And the absorption, right? One is, uh, you've got the delta V for the absorption, and you've got the delta U for the solvation. Does that make sense? So, um, so this is a very big piece of the photophysics of, uh, you know, uh, molecules absorbing light. You know, there's there's uh, absorption. Uh, electronic and vibrational, there's relaxation, vibrational and solvent, there's emission, then there's relaxation, vibrational and solvational, solvational, relaxation, solvation, relaxation, whatever. Does that make sense? So this is why there's this big stoke shift. Right. Now let's use our impressive and increasingly prodigious molecular intuition, right? Our photophysical intuition. And I want you guys to tell me something really cool. 
Okay. So let's start here. Let's start with molecule. Um, uh, let's say let's 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 pick on. Um, well, let's I don't know HCN maybe. So make it neutral, right? And now we've got this guy in the gas phase. Uh, at zero Kelvin, make it cold, you know. And um, the um, let's just say a simplified electronic energy diagram looks like this. You know, what I always draw. Uh, so zero degrees Kelvin. Let's say not okay, <laughs> you know, and it's okay in the gas phase. It's okay with that. <laughs> no, it's at zero degrees Kelvin, <laughs> and it's okay with that. <laughs> Shut up. No, no. Okay, um, so um, now these are these are the available states, right? Now with the corresponding. Uh, electronic spectrum will the absorption spectrum right and it's in the gas phase so there's no solvation no solvation energy to consider right so the absorption spectrum will consist of three lines one two three right And um, I'm going to plot this versus wavelength because that's the way this normally is done, right? So this is going to have these three lines like this, right? Okay, so now Nicholas, I want you to tell me delta lambda for that line. I don't know if you've had 161B yet or if they're gonna talk about it. Dr. Stone will talk about this shit because he likes it. And I don't know if you've gotten to it yet. But, I took um, it last semester, but I don't remember. Ah, okay. It has to do with the uncertainty principle. So it's like some inequality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Delta lambda will be greater than or equal to uh, delta E, delta T over H bar forget. Wait, no, anyways, forget, forget the, no, no, delta E will be, I'll oh, forget it. Anyway, so this is, this is, um, this is the inequality right here. It's, it's not delta lambda will be this. This is, um, ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> this will be, <laughs> greater than equal to h bar. Sorry, I forgot. I'm sorry, I forgot. I screwed up. Okay. So delta E will be, uh, I don't know, it'll be on the order of uh, h bar over delta T. So this is the minimum uh, line width. And that's the, the zero solvation, all that stuff. And so basically what we're saying is like, how certain are these energy states, right? 
And this, this broadening is called uncertainty broadening. Right. Now, um, the emission, the emissions then will are most likely going to be here. Oops, oh, sorry, guys. And we can plot them as on, a, on another axis here. And they might be, um, something like, you know, I can't, I don't have another color right now. I don't know if I have my pens or not, maybe I do. Nope. You know, I can never find a Sharpie when I need one. And I can never find a, just a pen. Ah, here's a pen. So the emission then will be like, And the delta E on the emission will be the same. I'm not trying to make the lines fatter or anything, right? So, okay, so now let's consider solvation for a moment, okay? Now we're going to try to understand solvation broadening, right? Now let's take two states right here, right? And this will be the, the cyanide in its ground state that's properly solvated, right? And so we'll draw a little solvation arrow there, right? And then I want you to consider for the moment what it would mean if due to um, thermal motion, if this ensemble now were to change to change to this configuration. In other words, there's some, you know, very fast process that switches this to this. Okay. What would happen to the energy of this state here? This is the ground state, this is the excited state. You know, V equals zero, you know. And we're going from this uh, U solvation equals minus one to this U solvation equals, now it's going to be 
something else, right? So let's say this is this is a favorable interaction. This is a favorable interaction. This is a favorable interaction and this is a neutral interaction, let's say. So this is has a negative u, a negative u. This has a negative u and this is has a zero u. Yeah. So what is u salvation on this side? Am I allowed to speak? Yes, you are, Nicholas. It's negative 0 0.5. Exactly. And it's 0 0.5. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you, Nicholas. You're so polite, even though I'm a jackass. <laughs> so, um, so now, now we've got another line here. We've got, we've got, now we've got two molecules, let's say. One is in this state, one is in this half solvationally excited state, right? And then, you know, we've also got, you know, one, that's like, It's like this, oh my God, what's happening now? You know? U solvation here is equal to what? Would that be zero? Or just be zero, exactly. each other out. Exactly. So now we've got, um, and now we've got zero, right? Minus one, minus one half, zero, right? And we've got this whole spectrum, right? A whole spectrum of possible solvation energy states, right? Any types of angles, any types of orientations. So there's, there's an ensemble average, right? Now, there is a, a super cool um, field of study now called single molecule spectroscopy. And I literally, I saw a bumper sticker. It was in the Whole Food, no, it was in the Trader Joe's parking lot in Los Gatos. And it had ensemble averaging with a, a circle and a cross, you know? Like it meant no ensemble averaging. And um, so <laughs> I thought, what the bleep does that mean? You know, but then I thought, oh my God, this is, this is a scientist. You know, it could be a physicist or something. And he's talking about how, you know, if you study molecules one at a time, you get very weird looking spectrum. jean Luca, what happened? You left. I'm My internet so... doesn't like you, Professor. I just oh. cut out. Oh, thank God. Thank God. I thought you I thought I hurt your feelings and you and you jetted. I'm so sorry. You know, I was like crushed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I just decided to leave. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> He's busted me. He's busting me. But so so Basically, if you can see it, the emissions from a single molecule, what you'll see is it's called spectral diffusion, right? 
you got to work really hard. You got to get really fluorescent molecules to see this. But you'll see the peaks, they'll be shifting around. You know, they'll be like, you know, and then sometimes they'll go dark. They'll, they'll blink and they'll diffuse. It's called spectral blinking and spectral diffusion, right? And what you see for a solution of molecules is just an average, right? An average over all of the, um, all of the possible states, right? Ground state and excited states, right? So, so what you basically see then is that every state looks like a, some sort of a distribution, right? Well, actually, you know, to be fair, the upper state, okay, it's kind of complicated, right? Because there's the photon energy and then the state energy to consider, right? So I think effectively what it works out to be is that it, it looks like you're, you're taking energies from this envelope to this envelope, right? So, so what will happen then, this is corresponds to solution. You have to move the paper up a little bit. Oh, sorry. Ah, there we go. My bad. A solution and say room temp. And in that case, you'll have, you know, these many states like this, right? And in fact, you'll have you'll have these sort of overlapping states like this, right? So instead of line spectra, what you'll see are um, I'll do the absorption and the emission here, right? As you'll see broadened spectra like this, right? Let's see. Does that make sense, everybody? Does some does anybody want a tuition refund? <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> it could happen, of course. Casey? I always want a tuition refund. Um, okay, all right. What do the two different peaks mean? Uh, uh, these peaks or these peaks? Those ones on the graph. These are these. Well, so and these, then you do the one inside. Oh, like there's like there's like absorption peaks here. Uh huh. Then emission peaks here, right? Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, I'm just trying to say, like, you know, you would need two it. Well, you, know, you would need two instruments or a very weird, fancy absorption spectrometer to do this. Okay, thank you. Cool. 
So um, this, the, today's lecture is, um, it's more, in, it's actually more physical. It's on the physical side of instrumental analysis. Instrumental is on the physical side of quant. So this is on the physical, physical side of quant, right? And um, uh, I feel justified in doing it because today is um, uh, I forget what today is. Oh, because we're doing instrumental analysis this semester. So. Um, That's what you signed up for, I guess. So um, how do you feel about this lecture, Cindy? So-so or thumbs up or what the hell or? More, more up than so-so. Mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm still coming to terms with the broadening stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. But yeah, I, uh, I, 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 I can see it. Okay, you can see it. Okay, good. I mean, it's, it's like, um, I mean, there's different levels to look at it. I mean, this is like a super detailed level, you know, and you don't need to understand it all. But I wanted to give it to you in like a real basic, like sort of first principles way, you know, there's different states and the states are all fluctuating you know and depending on what moment that photon absorption happens you know you'll get a different energy for the for the absorption you know it'll be it'll be you know and so when you average all those together in an absorbance measurement for example you see a you know if you like a little blur Right, exactly. It's a blurred peak. Exactly, exactly. You know, and, and maybe okay, I... So that makes sense. <laughs> okay, good. Excellent, excellent. Oh, my God. I can't speak for anyone else. <laughs> oh, God, oh, God. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, does that help you, Casey, at all? Or? It, yes, and also those arrows really helped. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah actually, the yeah, back I and like forth that. arrows. Oh, good. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Because I used really to just, helpful. I just used to just talk through this, you know, and people would get really confused. Yeah, visuals are good. Like, yeah, yeah, visuals are good, aren't they? Yeah, and um, uh, so that that's good. Yeah. Okay. Nicholas, how are you doing? I'm all right. Okay. I, I missed the first ten minutes, so to be honest, I was a little confused jumping into it. But... Oh, okay. All right. It made sense. I, can't, I can't even remember what you might have missed. I don't know. But basically, it's just all about, you know, um, I think what I did at the beginning was I talked about like, you know, like a molecule, a dipole with, with you know, water molecules around it, you know, and how these different solvation states looked different, you know. You started with that slide 118 on the Frank Condon principle. Oh, right, 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 right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's true, that's true, that's true. Yeah, and, and actually, you know, like everything you need to know is is in this deceptively simple um, uh, a picture right here. You know, it's just basically that, you know, there's, there's an instantaneous absorption of photons followed by a relaxation of a solvation sphere, then an emission, then another relaxation. So, so the absorption is on the blue side and the emission is on the red side. Now that's another way to understand it. That's really all that Harris cares for you to know. And I, I wanted you to know it in a little bit more detail. And there's actually a whole, other chapter of this, which is, has to do with the, um, the probability of, of a given state transition, right? There's, there's probability in like, oh, it's a probability that this 
pair of configurations will exist. There's also a quantum probability of like, what are the symmetries? How, how good are the symmetries of the states overlapping? Or how, what's the, um, the um, transition dipole moment overlap of the two states, you know? And I don't know actually anybody who actually calculates that, but as, a, as an idea, it's it like, you know that somebody knows how to calculate the different heights of the different peaks, you know? And there's a combination of thermodynamics and uh, quantum mechanics. I've gone over, I've gone over two minutes. So thank you guys so much. Thank you very, very, very much. Now we've, now we're down to 11, 11 out of 36. Yikes. Okay. I'm gonna, it's I'm gonna... a combination of 7.30 a.m. class and the fact that it's recorded. <laughs> Everyone's there saying, you know, I can just wake you know, up at 10 and watch the video. I, I, I would love to believe you, but the videos <laughs> don't get watched. Really? They don't get, no, no. Oh, the I most, think people weren't here because they were just, you know, coming over I here know, and watching the video. I know, I know, I know, I know. I think it's just people are giving up and, and they, they hate me and, you know, all that good stuff. So anyway, I'll try to do better, but I'm just, I'm not a, like, I just, I, I'm decent in the classroom, you know, but I, I just can't, this whole Zoom thing, it's not doing doing good for me, but that's all right. I'm gonna retire soon. <laughs> Bye everybody. <laughs> oh, professor. Yes. Oh, I wanted to talk to you after class. Um, okay, cool. Um, uh, shoot me an email and, I'll, and, I'll, and we can have a conversation. Okay. All right. Bye, Dr. T. Bye, Dr. T. Bye, Dylan. Bye, everybody.